Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be going over the latest implementation and support for UI Mask in Unity 4.6 and Text Mesh Pro. Now, I create these videos obviously to show you the latest features and functionality in Text Mesh Pro, but these videos are actually quite useful to me to help me uncover potential issues with the product as I actually have to use the features and the functionality in order to show them to you. So let's take a look at masking. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit the Create menu. We're going to go to UI and we're going add a button. We're going to move this button uh, closer to the center of our screen so we can uh, see it. We're going to get rid of the text label and we're going to basically change the color of the button to blue since the text will be white and we want to make sure we can see it nicely. And in order to add the text mesh pro component we can either um, left click on the button, go create and select UI and then this adds a text mesh pro component but as you can see it was added as a sibling to the object which is not what we wanted. Now if we select the button and right click to bring up the context menu, now it's going to be added as a child to whatever the selection is but I also added an additional feature which is now Text Mesh Pro does take a look and recognizes that it's a button and when it's a button it will automatically set the point size or the font size to 24 center alignment uh, change the label to the word button and also sets the anchors to the stretch mode so that if you need to change the size of your button then the text, whoops, if I select it correctly, then the text will remain centered. So this is a nice convenience feature. I added it because I've probably created a thousand buttons over the past few days to test all this stuff and I was getting uh, quite annoyed at having to rename and change the label and set the point size and all that stuff so I thought it would be a nice convenience feature to throw in there. So let's take a look at masking now. Let me uh, undo the changes here and we're going to add a masking component to this button. So add component, UI and mask and we're going to go move uh, this text label so we can see that the masking is actually going on. Okay, let's explain or talk about how the masking is actually done. Masking is actually um, done via stencil. In order for this to work, you have to set the proper uh, ID and settings for the stencil itself. That basically means that since the stencil settings are a material property, if you have two different buttons and one's enabled and the other one's disabled, well clearly they can't be sharing the same material. So let's actually do that real quick and show what's going to happen. So now we have two buttons. Let me move this one above the other one. And as you can see, they're both right now in the same state, right? So if I was to disable the top one, we can see that masking is disabled, masking is enabled. So if we look at the top one, it's using the Aereo SDF material, but the bottom one is actually using the Aereo SDF masking material, which is derived from the base material that they're both using. So um, if you have uh, let's say 10 of these buttons using the masking material then they'll all be batched together and if you have 10 of these then they'll all be batched together but these two are two separate draw calls. Now just to cover uh, a quick thing about draw calls if I um, actually delete uh, the text mesh pro objects and just focus on the button itself which has a mass component and we go to game view and we take a look at what's going on we can see that we have three draw calls so basically we have one draw call for the camera the background and then we have two draw calls for the button so whenever you have a masking component, there are basically two draw calls because one of them has to be the stencil itself uh, for the whole thing. So if I disable it, we can see that we have two draw calls. If I enable it, we pick up an extra one. If I duplicate this button, we can see that we're now at five draw calls, which is two for each button. Okay, now back to our regular programming. So let's go back to our button, right click UI and we add our nice button again. In terms of features that I wanted to make sure uh, were supported, let's uh, pick this object, let's move it here to make sure we can see that the masking is going on and let's reset the material back to its plain shape or, or settings. I wanted to make sure that we could drag and drop material whether the masking is enabled or disabled that that would work so let's take a look at dragging our outline material preset and we can see that we have the outline let's drag the drop shadow material on it we can see that 
we now have the drop shadow. The other thing that was important to make sure worked was the undo feature. So if we undo, we're back to the outline material, we're back to the base material, redo, redo, then we can toggle back and forth. The next thing that's really important is the ability to whether we're, you know, if I disable the mask, re-enable the mask, it's the ability to change the font and still preserve the masking state while this is happening and be able to, again, uh, undo uh, all these different changes that we've got here. Let's go back to our base material. Now, the next important feature, um, let's duplicate this button and move one up here. Now we have two objects that are sharing the same material. Now let's disable masking on the top one. Now um, it appears that they're both sharing the same material but in reality again as I explained the top one is using the Arial SDF material the bottom one is using the masking derived material. So intuitively, you would think that if you modify the properties of the bottom one, you would kind of expect the top one to also change since they're both kind of using the same material. And I actually had to do quite a bit of work to make sure it worked, but intuitively you would expect them to change and behave this way and they do. So as you make changes to any object that share the same base material, the changes will be reflected across uh, the two objects. So whether you change the masking material or change the base material, the change is reflected on both. So just for fun, let's go add a drop shadow. We'll enable uh, underlay. We'll move the offset here move it over there and add some softness to it and as you can see it's reflected on both objects. So that's pretty much it for the masking um, and it, it's pretty pretty good so far. There's like a few minor things that I need to tweak but overall it's looking pretty good. So um, please give me some feedback. If you have any questions or comments please feel free to post and thank you for watching.